Hi friends, it's Cods Midnight Lights Gaming. This is my last planned for spoken video. Last or second to last plan for spoken video before it comes out on the 24th. I've played this demo to death and I figured a lot of stuff out. So I have a lot of videos about um, everything the demo has taught us about combat, parkour, crafting and upgrading. And this one is really dedicated to accessibility, uh, the settings, as well as things I'm looking forward to and questions that are still, for me, left, um, that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like holding my judgment on the game based on some of these questions. So, let's get into it. A couple channel updates. A lot of Forspoken content, like I just said. A lot of Sifu goals that I'm working on, which are definitely worth checking out. I'm going to be making some Jedi Survivor preemptive videos, as well as some Hogwarts Legacy. No idea how I'm going to get through Forspoken, Sifu Arenas, Hogwarts, and Jedi Survivor. We're going to get through it together. We're going to cope with that much entertainment uh, by supporting one another. Speaking of supporting one another, I'm on my push to 1,000 subscribers. The second I make a single dime from any of these videos, which I love making for y'all, half of it's going to go to a charity we choose as a subscriber community. So all the more reason to like and subscribe. I'm going to upload receipts, fully transparent. You'll see everything, every dime that comes in, every dime that comes out. Which I think will be pretty cool if we ever get big enough to really make a dent. Um really make a dent in in uh getting getting some money some charities way all right i think we should probably just start where yeah where it all began where all the cr the cringe began i have a video about how the cringe has gone too far but you know the the problem that people are having is is that from uh, a twitter trailer or a teaser that came out for this game, they heard Frey talking with Cuff about what she's doing, <clears throat> and she was selling the game and doing so. Like, so you're telling me I'm in a new fantasy land and there's freaking dragons, um, which has been compared to the Buffy, the Vampire Slayer, and then Marvel director. I think I think he went on to do Marvel, uh, Jess. Um, what is it, Jesse Whedon? I don't know that much about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I think the cringe went too far because it's one trailer. I am excited about... The reason this is gets into settings, trust me. The beef... There are two beefs that came up. One is her basically talking to herself and Cuff in a way that just feels contrived. Like she, instead of experiencing the thing in front of her, she's got to like refer to it like... Oh my god, a bridge. That bridge is wild and cool and great. And, you know, just like seeing things, doing things, and then pointing them out while, while she's doing them. Um, let me see if I can find the name of this. Oh, it's in this article. No, it's not. Sorry, y'all. I want to get this name right for you. Well, it's not happening, so... <clears throat> what is in this article? Let me try one more time. I'll put a link to the Joss Whedon. Um... I'll put a link, some link. Oh, well, just go watch the cringe video. The cringe has gone too far video for me. I'm going to drop a link to that. Uh, so Joss Whedon is not involved in the project, but a while ago was trending on Twitter. This is an article from Polygon. As people pointed out, similarity, similarities between the trailer's tone and Whedon's tendency to pepper the dialogue. He writes with quips. It's not uncommon for protagonists to talk to themselves. It goes on to say how, like, Aloy talks to herself but it's strategy for us, so it it's, doesn't feel quite as bad. Um, they say it feels like a bad TikTok voiceover in this article. And yeah, so 
the way they describe it is the difference between screaming help I'm falling off a building and ah when you're pushed off a building which there are a couple of things I think about this and then there's another thing one is times are changing generations are changing games should try new things it's okay if you don't like it, but don't say it's unequivocally bad how she's dialoguing with herself. The the creators of the game, the, like, writers or something, came out and said, you know, a lot of people deal with trauma this way um, by talking to themselves, facing it head-on with humor. And it's like, okay, that that's kind of a, I guess, yeah, nice, nice try. Um, but they, there's just a lot of shade going around. The other thing is, like, this is a confident young black woman, and, you know, I, I wonder how people are responding based on that. And I, I just think that's worth asking. People should be asking themselves as they're cringing uh, or before they cringe about that. So those are the two things I think. Like, the cringe has gone too far. I get the Joss Whedon stuff. I get what the game is saying. But at the end of the day, if you if you don't like the dialogue, there are options for you, and we're going to go through those things. But, you know, the bad part is there's this other article from Kotaku where, oh, man. Like, I've been defending this game and, like, excited about a, a, a protagonist that's a woman of color. And, and the people who designed the game said some really messed up stuff. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I know it's down here towards the bottom of this one. Oh, <laughs> okay. So, Frey, who's a black woman, as reported by Kotaku, Keegan said, Keegan, who is the, um, involved in creating the game, motion capture director Tom Keegan relied on troubling stereotypes to describe Frey, who's a black woman, as reported by Kotaku. Keegan said her walk was hip hoppy and describe her as being very angry and on the verge of prison. Those are some not great tropes. And sounds, you know, one has to wonder, again, where, where diversity, no matter what, having more diverse protagonists is partially a good thing. It's not a good thing when it's thrown out there as, like, something to help sell a game and, you know, target an audience... Uh, without any thought, go, much thought going into it. So the report notes that Steven Totolio, Axios, Axios reporter, followed with the question about whether there were black developers and consultants involved in the project, which is so important, of course, both, well, because of course, you know, it, the, the saying is nothing for us without us, um, for all, all marginalized identities and intersection marginalized identities. They don't create a, a, a black character put her front and center of a video game and have a bunch of white people um, or non-black people developing the game you're gonna miss so much uh, and there's gonna be a lot of not great stuff like this to what Tom Keegan said so this same Axios reporter later received an FAQ that included a statement from the developer Square Enix. Enix we work closely with a number of consultants which is suspect to me because the fact that they're consultants and not staff, but from BIPOC or black indigenous people of color backgrounds to help portray Frey's character and tell the story of her perspective. That, to me, it feels right for diversity without, without depth. Um, which is different than forced diversity. I, I don't believe that, you know, forced diversity is is what's happening. I, that, that to me is a narrative of people who are like, don't, not, not willing to see games try and do different things or recognizing that these are works of fiction and, and things like that. Anyway, I'm going to have more video. I, I am going to do a video, I think about the, the controversies of Forza. I didn't want to get into that too much, but I, I did want to set up this video that way because I think it gives us an option to talk about you know, okay, so if the dialogue is bad, there's cringe with the the cuff and fray speak, which, you know, came up in some of the trailers as well. What can we do about it? So why don't we jump into the settings now that we've been talking for like 10 minutes? 
Um, and let me get my notes out real quick so I can follow along. So we've talked about the Joss Whedon, which again is like, did the Buffy the Vampire stuff, and they're they're comparing phrase dialogue with that. So a couple settings I want to highlight. So first is difficulty. So there's easy, normal, and hard. And what I notice with hard difficulty is the the um, enemies are a little more aggressive, but just generally a lot harder to kill. Um, and it wasn't impossible. It was fun on hard mode. I just and it helps with your combo meter and your scores that go into combat. Watch my videos on combat um, for more info on that. Um, where I found I when there were a lot of po more power, like when there were a lot of alligator crocodile things, I struggled on hard mode a lot. That was actually quite difficult. But everything else I could navigate. So my goal is to start the game on hard mode. That's my goal right now. Aim assist, don't turn that off. Spell switching, slow down. I really like full pause. I started saying I was just going to do full pause um, as a means of like getting comfortable and used to the game. But basically what it means is while you're like running around in the midst of combat and you hold L1 to change your spell, does it fully pause or does it slow down time? And say what you want. I mean, I'm still sorting through stuff. It doesn't give you that big of an advantage in my mind, but I do full pause. Damage received. Don't know why you do this. I guess you could do deep. So if you did easy level and decrease damage received, that's kind of interesting. Stamina recovery speed. I didn't put this on fast. It already was. So these are like sort of modifications. They almost feel like cheats. Automatically use healing items. Oh, so that is on. Yet sometimes I still died with drafts, so I'm still figuring that one out. Enemy knockdown time. I didn't play with that very much. Automatic support, spell switching, this I love. So what it means is you have two kinds of magics, right? You've, you've got Sela's and Frey's magic. This is Frey's magic. The, the rocks is Frey's magic. The fire... Fire, right? Like, that's, that is Sela's magic. Now, what this does is within these you have your R1 spells, which are your sort of... Um, offensive spells and then your L1 spells which are your sort I, I guess you sort of call them defense they call them defensive but it's actually there's some offense in them as well like charge and bomb bombardier bombardier is the best skill uh, it's so fun you can punt people um but either way all this does with your defensive spells it just auto rotates them so you don't have to go change them every time so it will just go to the next one and the next one, and the next one, and then after your cooldown, it'll find the one that just cooled down. So you're not constantly in here switching which one. Like, I, when I get into a battle, because they do, the cooldown's not terrible. When I get into a battle, I'm just, like, cranking on L2 to get these spells out um, and get them done. So I really like that setting. Uh, I definitely encourage you to turn automatic spell switching on. Let's enemy knock down. Adjust how long enemies will take to get back up so again that's sort of like a feels a little bit like a cheat um not saying cheat as a bad thing you know it's like the game's doing you a favor all right let's go to controls and you can see the the well you can't see all the buttons down there but you know it does map it out for you and yeah let's go to controls um no didn't mess with any of this Didn't mess with any of this. Did I turn trigger effect? Yeah. So trigger effect intensity. So this is when you're using your R2 and L2 buttons, when, when your stamina is low or something like that, it gets harder to press R2. Um, or you have to press it harder when you cast a spell. And just casting so many spells, it's just annoying to have to press a little harder than you're used to every time. So I would turn that off. You can change your confirm button. The set, well, we'll talk about this a little bit, but the setting I'm hoping changes is how far the camera can be removed from Frey because sometimes when I'm in combat, like, 
the camera is so zoomed in on her, you you don't get like a good sense of what else is around and things attack you, even if you have an indicator. I, I've commented a lot on how annoying that's been so far. Okay, so image quality settings. We've got quality, we've got performance focus. I didn't really mess with ray tracing. You can kind of see them on here. Quality is a standard setting that focuses on achieving a stable frame rate. Let me let me show you the difference. So this is quality. And let me show you, and some of this might change. My understanding, I read somewhere that, you know, late game development oftentimes improves graphics, but I mean, the difference is, it's pretty noticeable. It's quite noticeable. Um, the thing that I'll say though, it's not a, yeah, there, see that that's like significantly different. And so the, the reason I bring this up is, is mainly because Well, I, I don't notice that big of a difference. So the, the deal is that in this, the, the sensitivity, the like, the buttons you press and the speed at which you press them, it's like, it's all better. And I just didn't notice that big of a difference. So, I don't know, that's where I'm at. I'm gonna be on quality. Meet me there if you want. It's a cool spot. There's like plenty of places to hang out. Uh, didn't match with anything else. Didn't see any other YouTubers really messing with anything else on this. Sound settings didn't mess with anything. All right, accessibility settings. This is probably where we're gonna spend the most time. What are my notes here? Yeah, turn off R2 resistance feedback, toggle parkour, that's in here. Accessibility, okay. I would turn automatic item gathering on. It is beautiful and wonderful. I don't know if there are any items nearby. It does not look like it. Oh, here we go. So basically you would have to go to each of these and press X to pick them up, but when you turn that on, it picks them up automatically. It's just nice. Um, and I, I don't think you're being like a more hardcore gamer if you don't take advantage of that. Um, on, the, on the contrary. Automatic lock picking. Hmm. Honestly, I might turn this on. I don't remember seeing this. The puzzles have been a little annoying so far. And and why do treasure boxes need annoying? Puzzles are cool, but they shouldn't be these kinds of puzzles on you know to unlock a treasure. Um, I'm honestly I'm gonna turn that on now because it's. It's a little satisfying when you get the puzzles to open the treasure box, but mostly it's annoying. And I'm just sort of clicking around. Anyway, watch some of the other videos to see what the puzzles are like. Item visibility. I didn't mess with that. Let's see what enhanced visibility looks like. Because I'll probably do that too. It's just, you know, and this is, you know, all boats rise. Like accessibility is, is not just good for hearing and seeing impaired and um, mobility impaired folks, right? Like. It's so good, like for me, I, I would just prefer that things be more visible. These don't, are they taller? They don't look, that didn't look any more visible. That shore violet didn't look any more visible than anything else. Like, right, that doesn't look, it's just maybe a little taller, but then again, maybe not. Plus you just, obviously you just need to be using the up button while you're cruising around. Like all of this reminds me of Red Dead Redemption. All right, more accessibility stuff. We're doing great. We're doing great. Map icon size. You can in, you can make it larger. Highlight nearby characters. I might turn that on. Spell switching menu display. Adjust how the menu allows you to cast magic, support magic, and more as displayed. Not sure. Okay, magic parkour sprinting. So you can toggle it on. Or you can use um you, you basically hold circle now the reason i didn't turn it on to toggle is because it just made it annoying to stop parkouring and i actually stop start and stop quite a bit that's simple leap store semi-auto i strongly recommend this basically the difference is when you go when you, when you're going up to a a like cliff to climb up it 
If it's on semi-auto, basically every time your feet touch the wall again, you need to press X. Is it X or a circle? Yeah, circle, I think. Maybe I've been pressing X and that's my problem. What's really nice is when it's on automatic, you just hold circle. And I just don't know why you wouldn't, like, some of these cliffs are so annoying to, to go up, to have to go up. I don't know why you'd want it on anything other than, than automatic. So anyway, definitely would encourage, oops. I would definitely encourage that setting, accessibility setting. Now, you know, the accessibility in this game is, at least so far, it's not as good as God of War and um, Far Cry 5. Oh my god, I can't believe I forgot. I freaking love that game. All right, what else? Sprint button, L3. That I, I sprint never, almost. Um, I just parkour around. Cuff compass off. Cuff compass visibility. Cuff compass is that thing where you kind of... I don't know why I wouldn't have that on. Um, where I think you press it and kind of sh sh press something and then it sort of shows you the path to your objective. So this is this is one of the most important settings that obviously they've added since all of the, the frustration with the game. But you can change how much you dialogue with cuff and i've had it on minimal because i wanted to see just how little it was so i could help folks out but i'm probably going to have it on lower default but let me just put it on high so you can kind of get a sense of some of the dialogue stuff that we've been talking about run, run like something's trying to kill you i don't need your encouragement thanks piece of cake just getting warmed up, eh? Why always have to be the you know, what I... You know, not yeah. Not the up. most amazing dialogue. I'm I mean, sure. I don't know. That's funny to me. <laughs> ah. Okay. Let's... Uh, typically, Cuff has a little bit more to say when it comes to... That'll teach you. What he said. Yes. Yeah. Why don't we go ahead and yep. kick some ass? Well, do something. Yeah. They always like get me with that. You, you really sudden. don't shouldn't get too close. Very happy for you. I just <clears throat> prefer this magic. So talked a lot. Talks a lot during combat. So up to you. I'm going to probably be on low or default. I, I really don't think the dialogue is that, that bad. Any um, and sometimes I think it's funny. It like, I don't think it's... I don't think justifying this sort of humor and, and talk because of her trauma lands on me great. You know, again, that feels like it's plan trying to... legitimize something for the sake of, you know them selling the game or you know it's capitalism and opportunism and public relations all mixing together in a way that's just sort of why don't they just say like this is the writing that we wanted to do because she's young and confident and says what's on her mind and that's Frey it's not I commend you that's just who she is you know but if it is you know if they really did I'm interested in the storyline we're gonna get to in a second but I'm interested in the storyline and you know, because games are doing some really cool stuff with processing trauma, which is really important. But if it doesn't, you know, if they're just talking about how she's processing trauma as a means of kind of saying that's why her and Cuff talk so much, I, I, I mean, TBD, jury's out. That's all I got to say. All right. Got to cruise through some of this stuff. So that's, uh, is that all the accessibility settings? HUD size. So, now, I don't I don't think you can turn the HUD off. Which you might not want to because of all the spells and the, the way life is. Oh, excuse me. Battle ranking info display, that's just on the right, A, B, C, D. I wonder if 
Ooh, I do want full. Let I'm gonna check this out actually because I think, as I totally nerd out, I'm gonna do I'm gonna fight these buttheads, like. and then <laughs> be a I'm going to phrase magic. Shoulder. That's this. I don't like the look of this. Okay, so here's my goal. I. Oh yeah, you do get this. Damn it. I really didn't want to get hit there. As opposed to the rest of the time where I, I am trying to get hit, obviously. So you can't see it because my face is in the way. Damn yeah, it! That was cool. Oh, come on. I was trying to lock on to. Ha! Sweet salvation awaits, Um. So, what am I trying to say here? The reason I wanted to try this setting is because when I was doing my, like, upgrades video, I, w I was trying to figure out how I could determine what... Like, what was dropped. Like, it says, if you get a better grade, you get more experience and a better drop rate, but, like... And we know that raw materials come from enemies. I still don't... doesn't seem like I'm seeing... It's not telling me what's getting dropped. It's telling me, like, different skilly things I'm doing. But I am going to keep that on. I'm going to keep... This setting on, because what what I think it's going to help me with is just kind of learning the game. Like, what, what does it want me to do to keep my combat score up? It doesn't even have me in combat right now. So anyway, okay. So again, we're at battle ranking info display. So this just helps. This is going to be good early on to help inform like why you're getting the grade you're getting. That's my sense of it. Spellcraft challenge display. I'm going to put that on too. Um, spellcrafting is what you do in the in the refuge where you go through all of your spells and you can pick certain challenges to help upgrade your spells, which is basically just doing the spell over and over, you know a whole bunch of times to then upgrade it but you get to choose it's not default it's not automatic that if you do a spell a thousand times it gets upgraded you have to pick which spell crap like which you want to upgrade which i actually kind of have been liking so i do want that up because i'm pretty sure what it's going to do it's going to pop up and tell me like oh you just did you know your 300th of a thousand of this spell um towards that spellcraft challenge. Adjust the visibility of heavy attack hint markers in battle. Hell yeah, I'm going to turn that on. That's been one of my, the most annoying things. I swear not all of these were in here when I was in here last, but they probably were. I just have played enough to actually have a relationship with these. Okay, subtitle stuff. That's good. I mean, that's helpful for some visually impaired stuff. So that's all the settings. And that brings us to the last section, which for me is really like, okay... Um, what's left? What am I looking forward to? What questions do I have? And you know, the, the, the number one thing is the narrative. I think there's a chance that there's a really good story here that Frey's dialogue plays background to the story. So what I mean by that is it's a lot easier to criticize the dialogue without having any relationship to the main character. It just all kind of sounds like what... The, they drop you into this game in a way that, that wasn't super great. Um, but it is just a demo. So that's the biggest thing. What's the narrative going to feel like? What What's Frey going to feel like um, over the, the... You know, in cutscenes and over the longer span of the game? I think that will help me warm to the game a bit more because I'm liking the combat enough to buy it for sure i'm liking the parkour definitely enough to buy it like i said it's not spider-man it's not miles morales it's not batman um it's not the arkham games but it 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 is and it's not tsushima but it is like closer to those than games that really don't focus enough on combat and parkour the other question well the, the the other big thing is like are the what's the gra what are the graphics going to be like in other realms? So here's what's interesting about how how I've noticed how I've experienced this game, which is 
these wildflowers, which are kind of nice, show up when when you're in them. But if you look over a distance, they're 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 not there. What do you say? Kick some ass, take some names. Feeling a little blood. Or I guess maybe they're only in certain spots. But even so, they typically like spawn when you're closer to them. Like, see them right there. You can see them right here, but you can't. Like, when do they? Oh, it's still there. This was, I swear this was happening a ton where, like, anyway, the, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that when you look over this land, like, it's barren. But if you go down there next to those ruins, there are some wildflowers around there. So, there, it's just really devoid of color. Um, and so the question is that, is this that realm? Even these buildings, you know, they're just sort of like, Yes, I get that they're ruins, but I don't know. They're like, they're dull. And I just don't know if that's this so realm. That? What should we do? Or if it's going to be do other realms. I mean, that being said, some of this is really beautiful. Up there is absolutely beautiful. You can see if I can make it over there. Oh, please. If I can make it over somewhere here, maybe. I don't know. There's a bunch of floating rocks. Somewhere. Maybe it's a little further away than I thought. That was cool. You, I like ran along the wall for a serious ground there. Nice. Um, see those floating rocks up there. Like stuff like that. I think is really cool. But this game is not Elden Ring in terms of like beautiful landscape by any stretch of the imagination. You really do have to hold square. To... So okay, that's the spellcraft thing. Defeat enemies that are vulnerable to Sila's magic is one of the. So, I don't know, I just wish you could kind of see some of these wildflowers, maybe that they were a little brighter and interesting. That the landscape in general is more interesting. That's a question I have. Another one is endgame power. So, I really I really like the spell selection. There's some spells I probably won't use very much, but generally speaking, I really like the spell selection. I'm interested to see both what endgame spells are going to be like, like how powerful, what a really powerful fray looks like. I know you could say that about any game, but some of the trailers and previews made it clear, like, your parkour gets ridiculously cool, which I imagine, you know, and a lot of your spells get more powerful, and so I think there's a good chance that mid and late game fray is... is, like, mixing up spells and parkour in a way that's much more sat well, more satisfying than that. It's already pretty satisfying, but it could be a lot more satisfying with that endgame power. So I'm curious about that and, of course, how the crafting's going to help, you know, make that, that even more satisfying because you've upgraded your crafting and armor and all of that. Well, so we've got... I'm curious about that, of course, in one of the... I'm going to go ahead and turn that back down. Um, don't want it to get in the way of my beautiful voice, obviously. Um, you know, one of the trailers has her surfing. Like, some some way with all of the parkour, you can elect to put your magic surfboard underneath you and surf around. And, again, that just makes me feel like they thought a lot about traversal in this game, Frank, and stay with me. I think that really gives us, that should give us some grace and faith that, you know, things are, have the capacity to get a lot better. More picturesque landscape I talked about, surfboard. What other questions do I have? Yeah, again, with the story, I think, like, the enemies... I know they're infected with the... I mean, that's so cool. What's the other one? I, maybe I haven't seen it yet. One thing, I, I was talking to someone on Reddit about this, about how in this archive, these enemies look so cool, but you barely get to appreciate them in the actual on the actual map. Like, that gold... The fact that it's, like, gold coming out of their face is, like, pretty off-putting. But, yeah, they're all infected by the break, and then so are the... The well, the animals. I mean, that's cool, man. That's really cool. So that's it. I'm going to stop there and wrap up. It's getting late, and it's like my fifth video today. 
other I'm trying to think if there are other questions I've watched some of my other video um, videos about questions combat questions I think are mostly around you know more ways to to include parkour in the way we combat is is what I'm thinking um, what I'm mostly thinking about because that's what I I mean it's the combat that that make that I love most about games particularly when it involves a lot of skill and style um, or skill helps you feel really satisfied and stylistic so and I think the question is how much is this game gonna allow for that because right now sometimes the fighting just feels like Okay, it's not button mashing, but it's not Tsushima. Parkour questions I have. Not really the surfboard. Crafting questions I have. Not really. Map questions I have. Well, yeah, I mean, there are things on the map I don't... You know, like... At some point, hopefully, it makes sense to me why there's mutated deers out here that are way are really hard to kill. You know, like there's some story that needs to help inform the map, obviously, but it's a demo. All right, now I'm really gonna stop. Those are my questions. I'm the cause. Like and subscribe. Trying to get to a thousand subs so we can give some money to charity one day when I get a little, any, even a penny from any of these uh, videos. I was able to do that one automatically with the smurf. You really do have to stop and hold it. Anyway, I really am done. I appreciate y'all. Have a great day, time, whatever time it is for you while you're watching this. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna head out.